Hello, everyone. Thank you for your time today in attending this session. Today, we will discuss how to migrate a self-managed database to Cloud SQL, a fully managed relation database platform on Google Cloud. What are the methodologies at play and what each step of the process looks like? My name is Ashok Hula. I'm a data management solution manager focused on Cloud SQL, a fully managed relation database service. And I am Eri Santos, an strategic cloud engineer working at here at Google at the PSO organization. In today's session, we will understand the migration playbook as pertaining to migration of a self-managed database to a fully managed database. What are the various steps involved and how this systematic approach can be used in making migration projects successful? So here is the storyline for the session. We have a self-managed PostgreSQL database running on a VM. This could be any database that you typically find on-prem or on VMs in any other cloud. Imagine having hundreds or thousands of such databases and applications in your portfolio. We will then run a discovery slash assessment of these databases and use the assessment report to arrive at the migration planning strategy document, which includes at minimum a T minus plan, migration timeline, tech design document, and a RACI metrics. And finally, use the various artifacts that we've created over the course of this migration journey to actually migrate the database from a self-managed setup to a fully managed setup on Google Cloud SQL using Google Cloud Database Migration Service. We will explain the detailed step-by-step -step process and the decision points that led us to choose a particular service or tool in this session. In the world of self-managed databases, most time is spent on the operational aspects such as monitoring, maintenance, handling unexpected events, and so on. And there is very little time to focus on innovation aspects of the databases and their connected applications. Google Cloud SQL is a fully managed database service and takes care of your operational tasks, such as maintaining and upgrading hardware and OS patches, applying critical security patches, taking backups per a predetermined frequency and validating restores, replications for high availability, built-in monitoring and alerting database performance, keeping your software stack patches in sync with each other, and ensuring that the health of your cluster database systems is good and much more. With Cloud SQL, you will be able to focus on achieving application excellency, reduce risk, and increase velocity of development by concentrating on innovation rather than operational aspects. So migrating to a fully managed database and cloud native application stack seems very rewarding. However, each migration journey is unique in its own way. Whether you do like-for-like -like migrations from on-prem to cloud or perform heterogeneous migrations or rewrite the entire stack and embrace cloud innovations, a systematic approach in migrating databases and applications will greatly reduce concern and stress that a migration project typically is associated with and sets you up for success. Application migration is out of scope for this discussion, and we will not be going into the details of application migration approach. However, the thoughts presented in this session are applicable to application migration as well, and a combined approach for application and database migrations need to be considered in any case. Eric, you've been doing this for a long time. Why don't you explain the migration framework and its various aspects? Sure. Now that we had an overview about Cloud SQL and its capabilities, let's understand Google methodologies for migrating databases to the cloud through a series of demonstrations and discussions over the next few minutes. This is the database migration framework that we at Google have been successfully using over the last few years. This is a battle-tested process that supported hundreds of databases to be migrated up to this date. This is not a one-size-fits-all process by any means, but it is a great start to, gu to guide you through all the steps of the way to make your migrations easy and effortless. These six steps will enable you to perform a systematic migration of your databases and applications. Let me walk you through each one of those steps in much more details. Discovery and assessment are the very first steps of any migration planning. Discovery simply means what are the applications and databases that I want to consider in scope to migrate. Assessment is the exercise of understanding all the characteristics of your databases, such as size, version, RTO and RPO requirements, allow downtime, CPU memory and I.O. requirements, and so much more. Once the assessment is done, an assessment report is generated. This report provides meaningful details on applications, databases, and infrastructure, which will be used for the next steps of our framework. I know, 
This might sound complicated and time consuming, especially if we are talking about hundreds or thousands of databases to be migrated. But Google offers a large set of tools that can be used to make this process simple, fast, reliable, and scalable. Stratozone, for instance, is a free migration assessment tool that can perform detailed assessment of our infrastructure application and databases. We also offer partner tools to be used for free, such as Migvisor and iSpire, to our customers to assist them in their migration assessment process. Let me walk you through on how to perform a database assessment using Stratozone. The very first step is to log in into the Stratozone portal into a Microsoft Windows machine in the same network as your databases. Then we go to the second tab, Assessments. Click on Create New Assessment Group. We are going to use the Automatic Asset Discovery option right at the top of your screen. Let's create an assessment group for our databases. Give it the name of your choice. Input the estimated number of databases. Keep all the full options. Once we get to the sub-tab Download and Authentication, it is time to actually download the Stratopro agent that will be installed only on this Microsoft Windows machine. Use this authentication code generated when opening the installed agent. Now, in this screen, we can start adding credentials that will be used to log in into our target operating system of our databases from this machine. Once we add the OS credentials, we can simply add Stratopob to scan a range of IP addresses, looking for database services on them for an easy asset discovery. In this demo, I'm going to use four databases as an example. After that, we can add the proper database credentials, so Stratopope agents will be able to collect the necessary information on the databases. Our very last step is to add the database connection strings. You can also book upload connection strings for your database in scope for this assessment. Here I am entering the credentials manually. Make sure that you are picking the right credentials and inputting the correct IP address and port for your database service. Repeat this process for every database that you want to assess that, in the, that is in the range that you provided before. That will complete our configurations. Okay, let's sign in again in the Stratosun portal. Good, at this point of the process, we have already collected all information from our target databases. In this demo, I am going to show you and demo you the portal. In this case, I'm going to show more than four environments, so then we can have a great idea about the Stratos and potentials. This is the landing page. Feel free to navigate here. Let me show you something. This is all the assessments done so far, but let's click in results. Nice. Here in the results page, we get to see all our assets that were collected and all the various types of operating system, memory distribution, how many assets do we have, statistics about storage, memory, CPU. On your left, you can notice that there, there are some filters that we can use. In this case, let's use database inventory. Nice. Okay, this is all our databases, all listed here. The database name, server, OS version, DP version, core, so on and so forth. And we also get to see the fitness of those environments to Cloud SQL. Okay, let's see this other environment. Okay, this one has a high fitness. Migration tool recommended is DMS. Nice, everything looks good, we're good to go here. Everything is matching all the requirements to do the migration. Notice that on the right side, we still have more information about your environment. If you want, you still can collect some pricing information out of the tool, like coming reports, generate a report and proposal, the format that's gonna be, give it a name, let's select the filter. We have many filters based on the assessments, the groups that you created. 
In this case, we are going to use solutions, Postgres. Baseline catalog. This is the price that you want to see. Let's see on demand, one year commit, three years commit, generate the report. Great, our report was generated. This is how it looks like. So this is the table of contents that you can navigate and see all information about your environment. This is an executive summary that is going to tell you all the locations in which your PG instances were found and how many of them. You get to see in a great detail. This is a great place to start talking about the migrations that you're going to have in a high level. There are many other detailed asset level reports that StratoZone generates, which we will use in our technical design document and migration planning phase. I'm sure this demo was very helpful to showcase the StratoZone abilities to assess a database. Now, let's explore the next phases of the migration framework, target design and migration planning. The assessment report will be mainly used for technical design decisions, migration effort estimates, definition of archetypes if we are migrating hundreds of databases, technical limitations and eventual restrictions, etc. It is in this phase we make sure all your companies and Google Cloud's best practices, standards, and architecture frameworks are applied. As a result, a TDD document along with the T minus document is created. These documents will contain all necessary information for your technical audience to perform and monitor all the steps of your migration. For instance, if a TDD in a TDD, you might want to document all the supported database versions in Cloud SQL, as well as explore the different ways you might be able to migrate those databases. Ashok, can you talk a little bit more about these decisions aspects as pertaining to Cloud SQL? Sure, Eric. As Eddie mentioned, the assessment report provides us insights into the existing database landscape, their type, version, and usage statistics. In this phase, we use assessment knowledge and decide upon our target platform. Cloud SQL is a fully managed database platform and supports three DB engines, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, and Postgres. The versions it supports are listed here. In this session, we are migrating a self-managed database running Postgres 13, and Cloud SQL supports Postgres 13. So this goes into our TDD as our target platform. The next critical decision point is a migration approach, which is determined based on the application and database criticality, and its tolerance to downtime. An application or database with high tolerance for downtime can choose to use the simple approach of turning off the source, taking backup, restoring in the cloud, and turning the new database back on. This is simple, yet has higher downtime, and can be a strategy for less critical applications and databases. For more critical databases, which have very low tolerance for downtime, the simple approach does not work. Maybe migration via replication is a better methodology. With external primary approach, the Cloud SQL instance will be a replica to an external primary, the source database that it is replicating from, while the application is still writing to the source database. Once a source and Cloud SQL target are in sync and the replication lag is zero or near zero, you can switch the application from source to target on Cloud SQL and promote the Cloud SQL instance as primary. The database migration service helps in achieving low downtime replication as discussed earlier. DMS is a free service and supports continuous replication and promotion of replica to primary seamlessly. DMS will be our choice of migration service that will find an entry in our migration planning and technical design documents. Eric, can you show how a migration planning document looks like and what are the various artifacts and templates that one can use in this phase? Sure. Let me show you the migration planning documents that have been created for the purpose of the migration of our self-managed Postgres database to Cloud SQL. Here we are. This is our very first document. This is a master planning document. This is basically one single document that is going to concentrate and consolidate all artifacts that we are going to create in order to migrate our databases. In the table of context, we can see what are the documents that we are going to demo for you today. So let's jump in our first document. Project contact list. As you can see, this is a table, and this table is actually linked to another document. Let's click in the document link and see it there. So 
the contact list is actually a table with all names of people that are working in this project, their title, their organizations of office that help us to identify if this is from an external company or this is a resource that is within our company. The project works trend, which tells which work group that person belongs to. For instance, in this project, we have a database work stream, application work stream, and leadership. The next section we are going to demo is actually statement of work, which is going to lay out the scope of this project. It might be an internal project for your company, or it might be a project that is being executed by a partner. In the end, it doesn't matter because all of the projects they should have a scope. In this example, we are showing a scope that is asking us to migrate three databases. And it separated the scope into phases, very similar to our framework. It also calls out the, all the tasks and activities that are not part of this project scope. In this example, heterogeneous migrations. It also states that this exercise or project will take approximately 12 to 14 weeks. Next session, migration process. And in this phase, you actually get to see many similarities to our migration framework we discussed before. But the difference is that in here, you have a much more fluid process in which help us to understand how the communication should flow within my project. The next session, race metrics. It helps you to understand who is responsible, accountable, must be consulted or must be informed for each process of your project. Now, if you see here, every one of our major processes, they do have that definition. Who is responsible for discovery? You get to see here. And if you see a little bit above, you get to see all the work streams that we discussed before in our project contact list. You can also can include people's names or titles in those boxes. So let's get deeper in this racy. Not only we get to see the process level, but we get to see a task level within the project. Now we understand very clear who is responsible for doing each task of the project. So there is no confusion. This is a great communication tool for your project as well. The next document that we're going to demo is the technical design document, TDD. The TDD document lays out all the technical decisions that must be done in the project, what must be considered and what the options are. Let's say that we are migrating hundreds or thousands of databases, how we are going to decide the methodology to migrate each one of them, how we are going to design the target for each one of them. Are we going to do lift and shift or are we going to modernize? And which environment is going to be modernized and which environment we are going to do lift and shift? All of those points must be predicted and expected in a TTT document. This is a very short sample of a real TTT document that we work here at Google. To start, we lay out all the definitions that we have and we have been working in the project. So everyone working must have the same definition for the same terms that we are talking. So there is no confusion and there is no misunderstanding about the deliverables. Next, we have the business criticality. This is very important and usually is done in the assessment phase. In this example, we have four categories. In these four categories, they are using three attributes to determine how to classify and how to identify each one of them. For instance, L1 means an application or a database needs to comply with four hours RTO, one hour RPO, and have 99.95% availability. Next, we have DB migrations. And please note, some sections were intentionally left blank just to showcase that you can include your own sections there too. Cloud SQL, MySQL and Postgres. So at this point of the TDD, now we want to show how to decide whenever we are assessing a new database, how to decide the target design for it. Let's go through this example. We found a new database. Is it Postgres? Yes. Is this within this database version list? If no, the database must be upgraded to a Cloud SQL supported version before it can migrate it to Cloud SQL. If yes, we ask ourselves, is this an L1 or L2 application? If yes, we have a recommended deployment. 
If no, is this an L3 or L4 then? Yes, so then we have a recommended deployment. Right below, we are explaining in much more details what the L1 and application deployment will look like, some additional requirements, and also the diagram that helps to understand clearly what it is. The TDD is also a place to include all your runbooks, and the list goes on and on. Everything that is technical and must be standardized so everyone can follow and repeat the process in a scalable way should be here included. Let's get back to our main document. At last, we have the T-minus plans. Each environment that is going to be migrated needs a T-minus plan. In this case, we have two documents, one for environment 001 and the other for environment 002. As you can notice, there is a code in the name. So usually in the assessment phase, whenever we are discovering and assessing the environments, we give them a code. Like in this example, it is db underscore migrate underscore l1 underscore 001. That means that this is a database that will be migrated and this is an L1 database. Let's open this document and see what we have there. The first thing we can see here is the migration date. Which date is expected that we're going to migrate this database? Then we have the migration window, when it starts, when it ends. Right after, we actually have the TDD minus now. So, the TDD minus is split in sections for easy read readability. First section, pre-migration. It has all the tasks that needs to be done prior to the migration and who is responsible for them. Please note in the T minus column that those tasks needs to be done prior to the cutover date. In this example, the first task, task must be performed 30 days before the migration. This other task needs to be performed 14 days prior to the migration. So next section would be migration. And in this example, we are setting up a DMS environment for migrating our, our on-premise database. Because of that, we are starting the migration actually seven days out. So we are going to establish a CDC between the source and the target environment, and we are going to have that replication going on until it is time to promote the replica. Pause migration steps are also described in here. Everything that needs to be done from the security standpoint all the way to backup and monitoring is going to be included here. And also, if this is a critical environment, one or two days after that, that environment might be a scope for closer monitoring. And that concludes our demo for all the template documents. And as, as a result of the migration planning phase, we are actually de-risking the migration project by documenting all aspects of the process itself in various artifacts. Now, let's talk about how to execute this migration, which is where a lot of projects fail. Here are a few insights we want to share with you. Perform task migrations before migrating the real critical database and incorporate all your lessons learned back into your planning document. Stick with the plan and adapt it as needed based on your lessons learned. Optimize and automate the migration as much as possible so we keep human errors at a minimum. Use the right tools and services for the job and make sure you document all the required steps in a T-minus plan and TDD document. Let's not forget that Google Cloud has a broad set of tools at your disposal to make this task very simple. Ashok, why don't you show us how DMS can be used to migrate the database in question as documented in our planning documents? Sure, Eddie. Let's see DMS in action. The DMS documentation explains the process. There are instructions for each of the DB engines that are supported by DMS. Let's talk about PostgreSQL. So the first step is to configure the source instance by installing PG Logical extension. Once you have installed that, you need to configure each of the source databases by creating that extension in that database. Do note that DMS migrates all of the databases in an instance. And also, DMS does not migrate tables without a primary key. So if you want a table to be migrated through DMS, make sure that you have a temporary primary key for the purpose of this migration. 
And then you need to create a migration user and grant certain privileges, specifically related to PG logical schema and tables. And finally, you have to enable few PostgreSQL level parameters, such as shared, uh, shared pre preload libraries, must include PG logical, the val levels should be set to logical, and few others as outlined here. Let's see that in action. So I'm here on the right uh, in my PostgreSQL installation directory. Let's take a look at the PostgreSQL.conf. I've already made the changes as recommended by the document. I've set the val level to logical, and I'm preloading PG logical uh, libraries. So the next thing to do is to log in and uh, configure each of the databases. There you go. So a uh, bunch of uh, you know, grants and all of those grants to this particular user. So this is the end of uh, you know, configuration of source. Now let's switch to the DM, uh, Google Cloud SQL console and configure migration job within DMS. To do that, let's go to a database migration uh, a menu here and then click on connection profiles. So create a profile. The source database is PostgreSQL. Connection profile name is The host IP address is 128.0.2. So this is the source IP address. This is the user that we just created in the previous step, in the password, and then the rest of the details we can leave as is. So now the connection profile is created. We'll now go to the migration jobs and create a migration job. So the name of the job is self-managed to Cloud SQL. Source database engine is Postgres and it automatically populates Cloud SQL for Postgres SQL. Migration job type is continuous and then click save and continue. Here we select the connection profile that we created earlier. Uh, looks all right. Now save and continue. All right, so now we are entering the details for the Cloud SQL replica that uh, you know, we'll create and the source database will act as external primary to this replica. So Postgres is what we're gonna call and we'll give it a password. Everything else looks fine. We'll enable, allocate and connect. So that is done. Now let's proceed further. We'll read in all other uh, you know, options as default. Click on create destination. So now the instant uh, creation is in progress. It will take a few minutes and we'll uh, you know, see what happens next in a few minutes. Step is to choose the connectivity method to connect the source and destination database instances. Uh, we are selecting VPC pairing. There are other options here as well. So, so click on configure and continue. So it's all done. Let's check if uh, all the details that we've entered is correct by clicking on test job. All right, so everything looks good. Now let's create and start the job. So the job is now running. The migration job has been running for some time now. And uh, after the initial dump, it's now in change data capture mode. So let's take a look at the Cloud SQL instance and then see what databases have been created. So to go to Cloud SQL, let's click on SQL. So here you see the external primary and on the Cloud SQL uh, side, we have the read replica. So click on the read replica, go to databases, and yes, orders and G, uh, meme, gen, DB, the two source databases have been migrated. Let's take a look if the data has come across. So here I've connected to 
the uh, Cloud SQL instance, Postgres Cloud SQL, as you can see here. And now I'm checking the orders table. All right, so the data has come through. To verify uh, you know, replication in progress, we can also do a quick check by entering some data into the source uh, tables. So uh, if, you, if you remember, I mentioned that we are using external primary read replica mode to minimize downtime. So in theory, uh, what we're doing here is an application which is still connected to the source database writing data into it. So let's write some data into this table. All right, so data is inserted. Now let's come back to our replica and check if we have an extra row. And there you go. So we do have an extra row and we do have replication in progress. So now is the time to promote the Cloud SQL read replica as primary uh, so that any application that you've connected to your source database can now connect to uh, this new primary. So ideally at this point, you would shut down uh, your application and stop any writes to the source. And we can now go back to DMS migration service, the database migration service, and promote the read replica to be primary. And you can also see that the replication lag is zero. So now is the time to promote this database to become primary and disconnect it from the source database. So as you can see, the read replica is now being promoted as being a primary database. So this will take a while and we'll check back in a few minutes. There you go. It's now a primary database, fully functional, accepting both reads and writes. So now you've all seen how migrating a self-managed database to Google Cloud can be painless if a systematic approach is followed. So what next? If you're ready to migrate to Google Cloud SQL or other Google native databases, Google is willing to invest in that migration journey and offset your migration costs by paying up to 25% of your analyzed managed database revenue in partner funds or GCP credits, if you choose to migrate it yourself. You can request for a free Cloud SQL workshop delivered by our SMEs to learn more about Cloud SQL and go through the motion of migrating a database from self-managed database to Cloud SQL. You can also request for a free migration assessment workshop to understand your current landscape and potential future state. Learn more about our services at cloud.google.com and talk to your sales representative today. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. I hope to see you at Google Cloud.